comparing two proportions with a simulation based method as is done in the Introduction to Statistical Investigations curriculum. In this video, we are going to look at a simulation based test for comparing two proportions. This type of test is sometimes called a randomization test or a permutation test. The context for this test is a study about swimming with dolphins published by Antonin Oli and Reveille in the British Medical Journal. Swimming with dolphins can certainly be fun, but is it also therapeutic for patients suffering from clinical depression? To answer this question, researchers want to focus on whether or not swimming in the presence of dolphins helped some depression patients improve at a higher rate than other individuals that were in similar circumstances but did not swim with dolphins. The researchers recruited 30 subjects aged 18 to 65 with a clinical diagnosis of mild to moderate depression. The subjects were required to discontinue any antidepressant drugs or psychotherapy four weeks prior to the experiment and throughout the experiment. These 30 subjects went to an island off the coast of Honduras where they were randomly assigned to one of two treatment groups. Both groups engaged in one hour swimming and snorkeling each day. But one group did so in the presence of bald-nosed dolphins, and the other group did not. It is important to note that the participants in the dolphin group and the control group experienced identical conditions except for the presence of dolphins. At the end of two weeks, each subject's level of depression was evaluated, just as it was at the beginning of the study. Our response variable is defined as whether or not subjects achieved substantial reduction in their depression. Our null hypothesis is that the presence of dolphins does not help. That is, whether or not someone swims with dolphins has no association with whether or not someone shows substantial improvement in depression. Our alternative hypothesis is that the presence of dolphins is helpful. That is, swimming with dolphins increases the probability of substantial improvement in depression symptoms. We can define our parameter of interest as the difference in the probabilities of substantial improvement between the two groups, which we can symbolize with pi dolphins minus pi control. Thus, we can state our hypotheses as shown. Well, what did the researchers find? A summary of the results are shown in the two-way table. We see that subjects in the dolphin therapy group were more likely to show substantial improvement. In this group, 10 of 15, or about 67%, showed substantial improvement compared to only 3 of 15, or 20% in the control group. Our observed statistic is the difference in the proportion of improvers, or 0.467. This appears to be quite a substantial difference. Now there are two possible explanations for this observed difference. It may reflect a genuine tendency for depressed individuals to be more likely to improve if their activities include dolphins. In other words, the dolphins really helped. Perhaps, however, the 13 subjects were going to show substantial improvement and the 17 were not just by being participants in this experiment, regardless of which treatment group they were assigned to. And we just happened, by random chance alone, to assign more improvers to the dolphin therapy group. Now let's think about how we're going to set up our simulation. If the null hypothesis is true, then the dolphin therapy is no more effective than the control therapy. And we were going to have 13 improvers and 17 non-improvers, regardless of which group they were assigned. Hence, the assignment of the subjects to the groups doesn't matter. And we can just randomly assign the subjects' results to the two groups to see what would happen under a true null hypothesis. We can perform this simulation with index cards. We will let 13 cards represent our improvers and 17 cards represent our non-improvers. We will then simulate the random assignment process of the subjects to the two groups by shuffling the cards. Then we'll put 15 cards in one pile to represent the dolphin therapy group and 15 cards in another pile to represent the control group. This way, an improver is equally likely to be assigned to the dolphin therapy as to the control group. We will then compute the proportion of improvers in the dolphin therapy group and compute the proportion of improvers in the control group. Finally, the difference in these two proportions is what could have happened under the assumption of no association between swimming with dolphins 
and substantial improvement in depression. Let's try this out. Here are cards representing the results from the actual study with 10 improvers in the dolphin therapy group and 3 improvers in the control group. We shuffle the cards and deal them into two piles of 15. In doing so, just by chance we got 6 improvers out of 15 or 40 percent in the dolphin therapy group and 7 improvers out of 15 or 46.7 percent in the control group. This gives us a difference in proportions of a negative 0 0.067. Let's start making a dot plot of our simulated differences with a negative 0 0.067 being our first dot. Now let's repeat this process. This time we got 8 improvers or 53.3% in the dolphin therapy group and 5 improvers or 33.3% in the control group. This gives us a difference in proportions of 0.2 and we will add this dot to our dot plot of could have been values. We repeat this process again. This time we find that 7 improvers or 46.7% end up in the dolphin therapy group and 6 improvers or 40% end up in the control group. This gives us a difference in proportions of 0 0.067 and we will add this dot to our dot plot. Note that none of these simulated results are as extreme as our actual observed difference of a 0.467. Hence, it is starting to look like this observed difference might be unlikely to occur just by chance. But we need more than just three simulated results. In class, I would have each of my students shuffle the cards and compute a difference in proportions. They would then plot those differences on the board and the results might look something like this. In this class of 30 students we find that only one result was as large or larger than that of the actual observed statistic from the study. Hence at this point my p-value is 1 out of 30 or about 0 0.03. To get, better, to get a better idea as to what our p-value is, we should really do more repetitions. To do this, let's use the two proportions applet. In this applet, we start with 13 blue cards to again represent our improvers, and 17 green cards to represent our non-improvers. When we shuffle the cards once, we get a difference in proportions of a negative 0 0.067. Shuffling again, we get a difference in proportions of a negative 0.2. This is the same process that we were doing earlier, but now let's take full advantage of the power of this applet by shuffling the cards 998 more times for a total of a thousand repetitions to see what our results would look like in the long run of no association. Notice the mean of the null distribution is approximately zero which is what we'd expect because it represents the simulated outcomes when there's no underlying difference in the probability of improving between the two treatments. Thus we would expect our difference in sample proportions generated under this true null to reflect that and cluster around zero as well. We also see that the observed statistic of 0.467 is out in the tail of the distribution. This shows that even though it's possible that the random assignment process alone could lead to such a large difference between the two groups, it's quite unlikely. In the thousand shuffles, there are only 16 simulator results with a difference of 0.467 or higher. So our estimated p-value is 16 out of 1,000 or 0 0.016. This small p-value of 0 0.016 provides strong evidence against the null hypothesis and thus we can conclude that swimming with dolphins increases the probability of substantial improvement in depression symptoms. Since this was a randomized experiment and assuming everything was identical between the two groups, we have strong evidence that swimming with dolphins was the cause. Let's summarize what we have done using our 3S strategy. We first computed the statistic from the observed data. This was our difference in proportions of 0.467. Then we identified a model that represents the chance explanation. This was obtained by shuffling and dealing the 13 improver cards and the 17 non-improver cards. In doing so, we repeatedly simulated values of the statistic that could have happened if the chance model was true. And these simulated statistics formed our null distribution. 
Finally, we found that an observed statistic of 0.467 was way out in the tail of the null distribution and was unlikely to occur if the chance model was true. Thus, we had strong evidence against the null.